let's talk about Lilith. Today we're talking about not just what is Lilith in the natal chart, but how to actually work with this placement in the chart. We're going to talk about what Lilith means, what the story is, uh, its significance in the astrology chart, and then I'm going to give some tips and some pointers on how to work with this placement. So let's get into it. Readings are on sale right now, 50% off November 14th through the 22nd. So click the link below to get yours. Before it was Adam and Eve, it was Adam and Lilith. And Lilith didn't want to submit to Adam. So Adam wanted to be on top. Lilith wanted to be on top. And Adam kept insisting that Lilith was not equal to him. And Lilith kept insisting, no, we're made of the same stuff. We are made of the dust of the earth. We are equal. And Adam insisted, no, she was made of sediment. And because of this disagreement, Lilith ended up leaving. Now, some stories say she was cast out of the Garden of Eden. Other stories say she left on her own accord. But either way, the point is she left, you know, went outside the Garden of Eden, mated with demons, had a bunch of kids, and would have lived happily ever after if God didn't send three different angels to threaten to kill her children if she didn't come back to Adam. So these angels came and said, we're going to kill your kids. If you don't come back, she still didn't come back. And then her kids started dying. So then she became demonized as a succubus who like, um, you know, steals uh, unborn babies. And so she was made into this demon. And in order to really understand these myths, we have to think of the people who write these things, right? So the moral of this story at the time was to get women to submit to their husbands and, you know, teach them that lesson that even if you don't, like, if you don't submit to your husband, then even God himself will betray you. So this story is so active. This archetype is so active in our society today when it comes to the the argument that we have today with men and women, you know, and just to be clear, I am not making this video to turn every woman into a man hater. I don't think that's the way that we move forward. But I think that we all have something Lilith like in our lives that we can relate to where we're not treated as an equal, even though we are. I am not talking about insisting that you're at the same level of someone when you're not. I'm not talking about, you know, when you haven't ever studied economics, insisting that you are above your economics professor who has been studying for 20 years, for example. You know, I'm not talking about those kind of things. I'm talking about situations where equal doesn't mean the same, but situations where we should be treated like everyone else, but for whatever reason, we are not. So the Lilith story is infused with themes of betrayal, what our role, our society roles are supposed to be, and how, um, you know, sometimes people decide roles for us that we don't want to play and vice versa. Sometimes we want our kids to have a certain role and they don't do the thing we want them to do, or we want our partners to have a certain role. And it's like all of these dynamics are embodied in the Lilith story. So it's not just about men versus women. Uh, I want to say that. I want to say that because I don't think the the moral of the story is men are evil. Let's all hate men. I think the moral of the story to me, it isn't even that they both wanted the same thing. It's that Adam tried to get Lilith to believe that she was less than what she really was. Because She wasn't doing what he wanted. That Lilith in our own personal charts is a place where someone will demonize us when we are not being who they want us to be. So the empowering side of this story to me isn't like, okay, let's all hate men now. The empowering side of this story to me is about how we have the consciousness and the maturity and the authenticity to search within ourselves and see those places where people have told us we couldn't do something because it wasn't what they wanted or insisted that we be a certain way because it worked better for them and how we can sort of consciously recognize this and not be manipulated by our own fear of being outcast by other people. So let's talk more about the meaning of Lilith in the astrology chart. So this is actually debatable. A lot of astrologers out there are going to talk about Lilith and her sexual nature. I'm not against any of that, but I'm going to cover some other sides of Lilith that I haven't heard talked about as much. And that is the part where we repress 
this part of ourselves. So Lilith, wherever we have Lilith by sign and house is going to be where we deeply desire something, but we may not even allow ourselves to be aware of that desire and or when we express that desire, one, we can be a little too much and two, other people can shame us, shun us or outcast us for it just because it makes them uncomfortable. The wild, unrestrained, authentic, primal, instinctual nature of Lilith can be too much for some people. When it comes to Lilith in our own charts, we can we can look at this place as a place where, again, we really deeply want this thing. We might be anywhere on the spectrum of our allow, of allowing ourselves to see how much we want it. So, you know, by sign and house, we really, really want to allow ourselves to express that energy, but we may be blocking it so much that we don't even know we want it. We may be allowing it a little bit in private and not telling anyone, or we might be just going full full Lilith on it. Now, there's a way to work with this placement. We'll get into that later in the video. As a side note, there are times in our lives where we just don't get what we want and it's okay. I'm not trying to turn everyone into rich kids who are going to flip out on the barista when you don't get your coffee the right way. Okay, so honoring Lilith, embodying Lilith, and opening up to this placement is not about just selfishly, you know, disregarding all of our responsibilities. And, and there's a difference between our true desires and the responsibilities we just kind of don't want to do. And so watch out for that tendency to um, kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can be responsible human beings and also decide not to live up to society's expectation of us in ways that are appropriate. So it's not about just like immature wants. It's about true repressed desires that we don't haven't given ourselves permission to want or do. There are three different Liliths. One, there's a dark moon. It's hypothetical. Two, there's an asteroid Lilith. This is asteroid 1181. And three, there's the black moon Lilith. And the black moon Lilith can be separated into two measurements. There are two ways to measure this same point in space. One is the mean Lilith and the other is the true Lilith. The mean Lilith is not an asshole. It's just the average. Because this point in space oscillates, just like the north and south node do, where it goes, do, 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 do. It makes that sound too. <laughs> the technical name for Black Moon Lilith is a lunar apogee. And it's the point where the moon's orbit is furthest away from the Earth. But that point where the moon's orbit is furthest away from the Earth, that is the point that is Black Moon Lilith. Because it oscillates, there are two astronomical definitions of this point. One is the true Lilith, which is the exact place that point in space is. The other is the mean Lilith, the average. In readings, I use the true black moon Lilith. So that is H13 if you're using astro.com. So if you ever book a reading with me and you wonder why the Lilith I use is different, that is why. The Lilith that you're going to pick up if you use astro.com and use the Lilith and the that's kind of already preset, that's going to be the mean Lilith. So that is the one that is the average. So now we're going to talk about the steps to work with Lilith. Some of you maybe have already done a lot of the things to embrace and, and honor your Lilith without even knowing the name Lilith. A lot of these steps are really about coming back to our true self because what Lilith did that was so brave is she knew herself. She knew what she wanted and she knew her value. And so a lot of working with Lilith, it isn't about, you know, being seductive all the time. It can be, but it's really more about knowing your true value because that's sexy. That is sexy. And when you know your true value, even demons want to mate with you. Knowing your true value enough to know where to, when to stay and when to go in social situations. Knowing your true value enough to know when to say, it's okay to submit right now. This isn't the biggest deal. And knowing when to say, no, I'm not going to submit to this. And a lot of us will naturally have this a little twisted, but that's okay. That's life. So we're going to move on now to the steps that you can take. Uh, and again, keep in mind that you can personalize this to where you are on this journey. The first step to working with Lilith is to understand her, learn about her story, uh, read about her, and learn about what the Lilith myth even means in the first place. So you can notice those archetypes, those lessons, and see how they fit into your life at the moment. This is really the truest, best way is to read the story 
and then learn, look at how those themes and where those themes have shown up in your life. So number one, understand how she shows up in your life. Uh, One other way you can do this is look at the meaning of Lilith by sign and house. You can Google this and see what resonates. It's really important though with Lilith to remember that because we repress this energy, it's possible you may not relate to everything um, in the story or in the definition of your placement. It'll be important to really kind of take what, again, take what resonates on those and to know that it's okay if you don't relate to your Lilith placement. There are plenty of other places in the chart to start, and there are plenty of other steps you can do. Uh, The rest of these steps are things you can do even if you don't know what your personal Lilith placement means. So some ways Lilith themes can show up in your life are number one, people wanting you to have a role in life that you don't actually want. Now that can be housewife, but it can also be anything else, any other situation where people don't want you stepping outside of the role that works better for them. Another way that Lilith themes can be shown in people's lives is you can be kind of outcast or judged for just being yourself. Step two is actually something to watch out for. Be careful not to over-identify with Lilith because the whole idea here isn't just to go, oh, yep, I relate to Lilith. I'm an outcast. Everyone hates me. End of story. I'm just going to go with all the demons now. It's actually about coming to a wholeness and an integration. You know, we're not stuck playing out the story. We get to recognize the themes and the archetypes, but there's a process to move beyond just the shadow side of Lilith, which is the part where we are outcast or we are shunned or we are judged. So watch out for that tendency, especially if you have a prominent Lilith, which would mean you have Lilith in your first house or you have Lilith conjunct one of your personal planets. So number three is to identify whether your Lilith placement is balanced overactive or underactive. So are you, you know, keeping that energy locked up inside? Have you opened it up? Are you going a little too far with it? If you are repressing your Lilith, you will not relate to the desires that it represents. So if you have, let's say, Lilith and Aries, Lilith and Aries wants to go. It wants to be passionate, start things, be a leader. And you feel like I would never want to be a leader. Then you are probably repressing your Lilith. If you find that that is the case, that you don't relate to the videos or anything about the Lilith placement, I honestly recommend starting with some of the other steps in this video. Don't ever try to force videos to fit because it's supposed to be what your placement means. Uh, If your Lilith is overactive, you're probably going a little too hard on that area. So like, let's say you have Lilith in the ninth house, you'll go around telling everyone how their beliefs are wrong and you're gonna get a lot of pushback for this. So if you're going really, really heavy on the sign or the house of your Lilith, it could be overactive and there could be a need to balance it out by really seeing, um, you know, bringing more of a cooperative energy to it. It doesn't mean you have to stop, but like learning the value of sometimes submitting is also part of the lesson of Lilith is again, when we should submit and when we should not submit. That is what this lesson is all about. If your Lilith is balanced, You can love and accept this part of yourself for exactly who you are. You don't need to hide it, lock it away, or, um, you know, keep it from people. You know, you're not walking on eggshells afraid to express this energy. You can express the energy in a balanced way, not overly crazy way, but in a balanced way, but you're not Letting the fear that other people are going to reject you, run your life, or stop you from the things you truly want or truly desire. Step number four, you can do this no matter where you're at on the spectrum, and that is practice self-love. And I'm putting this in here because Lilith is like a very extreme placement. It takes a lot of self-awareness to be able to kind of parse through the places with our Lilith where we're going too far and the places where we're not opening up enough. And the one thing that will make this a lot harder is if you don't have that self-love, if you don't have that feeling like you are okay in your own skin. So this is really important in doing any kind of work like this to make sure you are okay. And if you are not okay, if you feel right now like you are not okay, I do not recommend working with Lilith at this time. It's something you can come back to later. Lilith has been given a bad rap and demonized for saying no. 
If you don't have healthy self-esteem or enough self-love, when you say no and someone demonizes you, you're going to be like, oh my God, that's my fault. I'm so sorry. Right? So there's a need to have cultivated enough inner strength to be able to face opposition. There's also a need to have cultivated enough inner strength to be able to look within yourself and see what is wrong with you, basically, and love that part. So if we don't have enough self-love, what can happen when we're trying to do work like this is it just is painful. So if you find this kind of work is painful, it doesn't mean stop looking at it, but focusing on becoming a, a, the best version of yourself, focusing on self-love can actually help us to be able to see the things that are not okay with ourselves or the places we could be doing better and face it without re-traumatizing ourselves. In order to truly honor Lilith, Black Moon Lilith, this part of ourselves that we all have, you got to be able to trust your own instincts and you got to be able to know the difference between an urge and a true desire. And this is tough because for each person, this might be very, very different, but there's a difference between like, I have an urge to eat potato chips right now versus the desire, which might be in my, in that case, you know, I always talk about food in that case that might be like, maybe my body desires some carbohydrates, right? Or like I have a desire, I have an urge to go shopping, but maybe, maybe I just desire, uh, you know, maybe I'm bored, (laughs) And I just desire some stimulation and I'm just putting shopping in that space. If someone has their Black Moon Lilith in the ninth house, they will have an urge to poke holes in other people's belief systems. They will have this urge to tell people, well, that doesn't make sense because of this or, you know, really kind of, um, it might be even in a good way, like they might have good intentions with it, but there is an urge to tell other people what's wrong with their belief systems. The desire The action is picking apart other people's belief systems or accusing them of being wrong. And then they get really bad pushback for this with this placement. But the true desire is to actually feel good in what you believe. So there's a true desire underneath the urge. The urge is not one to necessarily listen to, because in this case, when you threaten people's belief systems, they get really upset. They get really upset. Some people need their belief systems. I mean, the worst case scenario is like, let's say you're going around to Christian people and telling them why they shouldn't believe in Jesus and why the Bible is fake. Well, even though from your perspective, you think you're helping somebody, they have the right to their belief system. It's called faith for a reason. It doesn't have to make sense. There's a difference between you deciding your own belief system and then needing to go provoke other people. So this is one of the ways we can see how like someone with this placement, they could actually benefit from learning when to back down. If they're living out that that ninth house Lilith placement, by hating on other people's belief systems or poking holes in them. And if you are not self-aware and you have that placement, you're going to just be like, everyone's so mean to me. No one, no one listens to what I have to say about beliefs. And it's like, okay, are you listening to what other people have to say about beliefs? And so this is one way that you can work with Lilith is to kind of peel back the layers and see If your natural, instinctual, you know, animalistic or your urges in that house, whether they're sexual or not sexual, could be possibly causing problems in that house of your life. So there's a pure desire underneath this urge and the pure desire is to feel like you have a good belief system. Well, why would you have an urge to poke holes in someone's belief system? Maybe because deep down you have a fear that your belief system isn't real. You know, maybe there's a fear that there is no God. Maybe that's why 9,000 Lilith people tend to go through this. So the more you can do this kind of work with yourself and explore, you know, why would I be afraid of this? What am I afraid of? What do I think I'm not going to get if this happens? Those kind of questions can actually be really helpful when working with Lilith. I want to talk about authenticity now because this is what Lilith really truly embodied was authenticity. She was herself. She knew what she wanted. She didn't stop wanting what she wanted just because somebody else in her life wanted her to. And so when it comes to authenticity and truly embodying Lilith, this is another thing you can do regardless of whether you relate to the placement or not in astrology, and that is... You can do two things to become your most authentic self. One, 
stop doing stuff you don't like. I don't mean stop doing going to work if you don't like work or, you know, doing the things you need to do. I'm not talking about quitting things that you need to do to be a responsible human. I'm talking about all the other stuff, like working in a job you hate forever and never changing it. Stop doing that. Stop doing that by changing it to something you like better. Or, you know, start doing something else that you do like on the side of that job. This is just an example, but oftentimes this is where people feel their inauthenticity the most. Stop being friends with people if you don't like them. Start being friends with people you do like. Explore the interests you do like. Now, this might seem really simple, but it's the path to authenticity. Everyone talks about being yourself, but nobody talks about how you do it. The way you be yourself, your true self, you stop being someone else. You see the ways that you are pretending to be someone else. You see the things that you are doing in life just because you think you're supposed to, or you think that, you know, you should, or someone will be mad at you if you don't. And you start doing the things you want to do, regardless of whether other people are going to approve or not. So here are some things I did before I even knew about Lilith to start living a more authentic life. One, I did not accept a promotion for a job that I hated. And I knew everyone else would have said, oh, you should have taken that promotion, blah, blah, blah. But I knew that I didn't want to stay in this field. I knew it was promoting me into something I didn't want to be into. So I said, no, even though from the outside looking in, it seemed like a stupid choice. Two, I left a 12-step program because I didn't feel like I could relate to the beliefs of that 12-step program anymore. Uh, I had been involved in that 12-step program for 13 years at the time, and it was a long process of going, making that decision and even just wanting to before I really finally felt like I was strong enough. But for me, this was a process of learning to trust my own self again. And the third thing I did was I left a relationship that wasn't right for me. Now, this might seem really basic to a lot of people, but I know a lot of people out there, a lot of people watching this video struggle with those kind of things. When you want to stop being friends with someone, when you want to break up with someone, when you want out of a situation that you know isn't right for you, it can be hard to give yourself permission to say, okay, I did everything I could to make this work. And now it's time to move on. And so the boyfriend thing, I'm bringing this up because it really uh, applies to how I was conditioned or what I thought I was supposed to do. I remember having a relationship before this where I didn't leave even though I wanted to. I wanted to leave this relationship, but I remember thinking to myself, what will everybody think? What will everybody think if I leave this guy and I didn't have like a big problem? So what happened? Well, eventually there was a problem. And that's because I couldn't leave without a reason. And so I got my reason and I left. But um, it was more like he he left. But basically, instead of just saying, this isn't working, I'm out. I couldn't do that because I felt like you weren't supposed to just do that. There was something in me, no one told me this, but something that made me feel like, I can't just leave. I have to have a better reason. I can't just want something better. So next, start doing things that are authentic. This seems easy, but when you are repressing a desire, it will not be as easy. Um, By definition, repressing it makes it harder to connect to that thing. You sometimes don't even know what you want when you're not living an authentic life. And I remember this when I was working at a trucking company, I was so unhappy. I didn't know what I wanted. I was in a 12-step program and I remember thinking to myself, someday, someday maybe I can just leave this 12-step program and go become a monk. Now, I am not no monk, but... I have left that 12-step program and I am living the life I want to live, making the decisions I want to make, having the job I want to have, doing the work I want to do, and living the life I want to live. There was a time where this seemed so scary because it's like I thought I needed permission to start doing the things I wanted to do. And so some of the things not related to this that helped me out is one, I moved to a country I wanted to live in just because that was significant because I had no reason for doing that. I just wanted to. So maybe there's something you want to do that you just want to, that there's no reason you just want to. 
Just by doing that thing, it opens up. It's like you become a new version of yourself now that has done something that you want to do. So the next time a little interest bubbles up from within you, you're going to be more likely to listen to it. This is why when people say to change your life, you start doing what you love. And when you are in a job you hate or you're you're feel like you're living a non-authentic life, this will seem impossible because you're like, I don't love anything. But you just do one thing that you want. You just do one and that opens you up, you're now a new version of yourself who did the thing you wanted to do. And then the next time you want to do something new, you do it again. And when you meet someone who is maybe not super close, you know, you run around, you run into people who are going to stop you or, or think what you want to do is stupid. You don't be friends with those people. You be friends with people who do stuff you think is cool. And then you start talking about what you do. And some people are going to be like, that's weird. But then the people who think it's cool are going to know that you do that thing. So in order to truly work with Lilith, this goes so much beyond expressing our sexuality or, you know, being more free. It goes way deeper into the ways that we are not being who we truly are, the ways that we are afraid to say no, and stepping into the most highest version of our own self, where we are not submitting to what other people say we have to be, where we are the ones deciding who we are, when we own our value, when we know, no, we're not made of sediment, we are made of the dust of the earth, then it is much easier to say no and to know in our hearts and our souls what to say no to. Let me know in a comment below if it brought up questions or if you want more videos like this. I always love hearing from you guys. And don't forget, I do have a reading sale going on through the 22nd. You can click the link below to book. And if you're watching this after, you can always join my email list where you'll get notified for other promotions and stuff I do. And thank you all for everything you do to support this channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.